We have made it to chapter 8 of 10 Days That Unexpectedly Changed America, so we're getting uh, toward the end here. Just a few more to follow after this one. Uh, chapter 8, uh, entitled Einstein's Letter, uh, does deal with a letter written by Albert Einstein, who has been referred to by some as the Pope of Fig Physics. Uh, he wrote this letter uh, and co-signed it along with another scientist, probably less familiar to many of us, named Leo Szilard, who was an eccentric Hungarian-born physicist, and they wrote this letter to persuade Franklin D. Roosevelt to initiate, he, Roosevelt was of course president at the time, to initiate the so-called Manhattan Project uh, that would become uh, very important in history as it developed the atomic bomb. Uh, so sometimes something as simple as a letter can change the course of history. And that is what uh, this deals with. Uh, this letter, uh, some has argued, actually uh, saved uh, the world. If Hitler would have gotten the bomb uh, first, the world could be quite different. Uh, so this what that's what this chapter does, uh, dealing with the atomic bomb and the uh, some of the events that led to its development. Uh, just to set the stage... In August, August 6th of 1945, the United States dropped uh, the first atomic bomb other than the one that had been uh, tested in the deserts of New Mexico. They dropped the first bomb on Japan on Hiroshima on the 6th of August. Uh, two days later, uh, the Soviet Union entered the war against Japan and on August the 9th, 1945, the United States dropped a second atomic bomb on the city of Nagasaki, which was followed very quickly by Japanese surrender and the end of World War II. Uh, that, talks, so that talks about the use of the bomb, but to back up in terms of what this chapter dealt with, uh, again, it'll deal with the significance of Leo Szilard and Albert Einstein. Both of these men uh, were German Jews. A little bit about each of them. Uh, Szilard, uh, kind of an eccentric scientist uh, who grew up in Germany. Uh, he uh, investigated and researched nuclear fission and atom splitting. He was the first to, to kind of come up with that theory that it was possible. He's not actually the first who did it, but those who did were basing it on his research and his studies. Uh, Szilard uh, realized uh, as time went on in Germany that uh, it was going to be a very uh, dangerous situation uh, when and if Hitler took over and that if he received this technology that it could be very problematic. So he tried to do things uh, to prevent that and actually fled uh, Germany uh, in time to avoid being uh, captured and persecuted uh, by the Nazis uh, since he was a Jew. Albert Einstein, very similar, was also a German uh, Jew who grew up during this time. Um, and Albert Einstein, uh, as you may be somewhat familiar with, uh, developed a number of very important theories. He's the one that came up uh, with the equation which showed uh, what the devastating results of nuclear fission and atom splitting could be. That equation that you've seen, energy equals mass times the speed of light squared or E equals mc squared. Uh, Einstein also developed uh, what we referred to as the theory of relativity and was of course a Nobel Prize winner uh, in 1921 uh, before fleeing to the United States or excuse me he won that Nobel Prize then later fled to the United States uh, during the rise uh, of Hitler and those uh, those ongoing problems. Uh, Szilard became convinced of the danger of Germany using scientific technology that was being developed to develop the atomic bomb and was scared to death basically that Hitler might develop this technology first uh, and wanted to, if he could, to persuade the rest of the world and perhaps the United States to seek to develop that technology first. He didn't feel like that he had quite the voice or the popularity to get that message delivered, so he drafted uh, Albert Einstein uh, to the cause, very popular Albert Einstein in the United States. He was living uh, in New York, and the book tells what I thought was a pretty uh, funny and interesting story about uh, Leo Szilard and one of his friends, a Eugene Wigner, 
who drove out to Manhattan looking for Einstein, uh, didn't bother to get directions, got lost, had to ask a child for, uh, for directions to find where uh, Einstein was. You have these huge brains, these scientists, Nobel Prize winners, they fail to ask directions and are getting lost, uh, and a child has to help them. Uh, anyway, they meet uh, with Albert Einstein. They told him about the technology that was being developed, uh, that the atom could be split, that that technology could be used to develop an atomic bomb, and that it needed to be kept out of Germany and um, Hitler's and the Nazis' hands, and they needed to do anything that they could to prevent that. America needed to develop that technology first, or it could be very devastating. They composed a letter. They prepared to send it at first uh, to Belgium to get them to keep their uranium and not to allow Germany to get that. And Alexander Sachs, uh, who knew that this letter had been written, uh, believed that it needed to actually be delivered to President Franklin D. Roosevelt because it was such significant uh, importance. So it goes through the events of Alexander Sachs meeting with FDR, trying to convince him to do something with this technology, to start some sort of program to do research and perhaps to begin to develop the atomic bomb. FDR kind of stiff-armed the whole idea at first until Alexander Sox came back uh, and told him a story uh, uh, based on what had happened during uh, the rule of Napoleon in France. That story that he mentioned to him is that a young enterprising American inventor went to Napoleon and said, look, if you use uh, these steamships that I'm developing, you can invade and you can conquer England. Uh, England uh, could have fallen if that would have happened. Napoleon, very, very short-sighted, did not do that. So Sachs reminds FDR of that story and said, hey, do you want to make the same mistake that Napoleon did? This could be technology that could win this war. If they get it first, we're in trouble. FDR, being convinced, uh, decided to ultimately uh, start a program that would end up in the creation. There are a couple of steps leading up to this, but ultimately it led to the creation of what became known as the Manhattan Project that developed the atomic bomb. Leslie Groves headed uh, the Manhattan Project, and you had cities uh, being uh, basically built out of nothing, one in Tennessee, one out in the uh, middle of the desert in Alamogordo, New Mexico, uh, doing research on this, and ultimately they developed the atomic bomb. Uh, interestingly enough, Albert Einstein was not a part of the Manhattan Project. He was viewed as a security risk and FBI Chairman J. Edgar Hoover, who is quite a weirdo himself, uh, refused to allow Einstein to even serve on this. Uh, as the bomb was being uh, developed, uh, Germany was being defeated. Uh, the chapter does highlight the rise of Germany's power, taking over much of Europe, but as the bomb is being uh, developed, Germany has been rolled back. You have the D-Day landings, you have the push toward Germany, Hitler commits suicide early in August of 45, and Germany has surrendered. And now we have this atomic bomb, which was originally planned uh, to be used against Germany. What do we do with it? Well, we still had not defeated Japan. And it's interesting, uh, and the chapter uh, gets into this and does a very good job, uh, that Leo Szilard and Albert Einstein himse and himself uh, basically changed their mind. Uh, they regretted uh, writing the letter. They developed the technology that had been been developed that led up to the atomic bomb and tried to write other letters uh, to persuade uh, now President uh, Harry Truman not to use the atomic bomb. Uh, they were against it. The chapter didn't get into it, but I suspect that part of their um, changing of their of their mind was the fact that the bomb was not going to be used on Germany. Uh, they probably wouldn't have had qualms with that because they hated Germany, Nazism, and uh, the racism, but now that you have it 
perhaps being used on Japan. They changed their tune. Uh, Truman uh, was not persuaded uh, to uh, uh, buy them. He decided to go ahead and use the atomic bomb. Uh, Truman, uh, we'll talk about this much later in the school year, his basic reasoning was this bomb can save American lives, so I'm going to use it. So we do, and the two Japanese cities uh, are bombed and devastated. It does lead to the end of the war. The chapter concludes uh, with uh, just kind of hitting some highlights of the effect of the use of the atomic bomb uh, since then in the post-atomic or in the atomic age since 1945. Uh, the use of the bomb led to increased involvement of the United States in world affairs. Uh, it directly, some think, led to what we call the Cold War, this ongoing struggle between the, uh, between the United States and the Soviet Union that ended back in the uh, mid-90s. Uh, the book also speculated that this idea of MAD, M-A-D, mutually assured destruction, that if atomic bombs were used that everybody would be destroyed, uh, perhaps led to peace in Europe, that there was so much fear about what an atomic bomb could do that there wasn't any war uh, in Europe after 1945. But the United States and the Soviets did tend to fight it out in other places, Korea and Vietnam, etc. Uh, the use of the atomic bomb also led to an increased view of science in the United States, government money being invested into science, which led to the development of the first computers and the computer age connected with uh, the defense industry. Uh, uh, this also led to uh, space exploration, and ultimately the first man landing on the moon, uh, satellites, and all sorts of uh, uh, space exploration. The chapter uh, ends uh, by giving a quote that President Eisenhower, uh, who served as president in the 1950s, when he left office in 1960 before Kennedy took over, Eisenhower warned about what he called the military industrial establishment as he was concerned about so much expenditures on our military and on our defense. So was the use of the atomic bomb a good thing at the time? Has it led to positives or negatives since then? Are those types of questions that will continue to be asked and discussed? That's chapter 8. Just two more remaining.